this is Carl Ackerman, and I am host of Journeys of the Mind, and I am very lucky today to have the company of CEO John Cho of the uh, of the Atherton Y and also uh, programming uh, for many other Ys. And uh, the theme of uh, today's show is, you know, how the Y has changed, you know, uh, when um, uh, my uh, engineer and boss uh, from ThinkTech Hawaii, uh, Jay Fidel and I were young, younger, you know, the Y was a place to go and exercise and, um, and be able to swim. So today, John is going to tell us what the Y does, which is much more expensive. So John, the first question I have for you is, uh, you know, how did you get involved with the Y? And because it's Journeys of the Mind. And, um, you know, what your official current title is in the Y, because things like this change after all. I am the program executive director for teens and young adults across our association. Um, so I had the initiatives for teen programming and young adult programming for um, the YMCA of Honolulu. Um, I also oversee our Atherton location that is located on UH campus in the QLC building. We have our office on UH um, open to students at UH Manoa, um, open to students of any college really, but because we're on UH, right, UH Manoa students mostly come by. Um, we offer a space for them to study, for them to print, for them to, we have a little um, boardroom, a meeting room for them to do group projects and so on and so forth. You yourself, were you um, a member of the Y? Did you join the Y? How did you get, you know, linked up with the Y in such an important position? In 2019, um, I had come on board our A-plus program as it was, very, it was supposed to be very, very, very part-time, um, like twice a week um, for three hours a day. Uh, a, a friend at the time who was working needed extra help at one of her locations. And so I came on board because I did have that childcare experience. Um, you know, as time went on, a lot of doors opened up, um, a lot of opportunities that I took advantage of. Um, and I just fell in love with the programs that we are able to offer and that we have offered. Um, I didn't realize until about three years in that I, I actually did used to go to um, Central YMCA when I was in high school. Um, and I, I, for some reason, it hadn't clicked until three years in that, hey, I was a member here. Because I remember walking through Central YMCA and thinking, why does this place seem so familiar? And then it just clicked that I used to play basketball in that gym. Um, I used to work out in, in their old uh, fitness, fitness gym. And so everybody has been involved with the why. I feel um, one way or another. And I was fortunate enough to again, have opportunities open up for me um, and pursue them. You already mentioned that this is quite distinct because you you operate, um, in addition to your programming position, um, you're really the CEO of the Atherton Y. And so uh, my question to you is, it's you know, it, it's a university-based Y. It's in the Queen Lilio Kalani uh, building. And um, uh, my question to you is no pool um, and not many athletic things to work out. So when the, when the Students come into the office. Um, what do they generally do? You're right. We we don't have any pool. We don't have a fitness facility. Um, we don't have child watch. So our our office again is really just a space for the students to come um, and and be in an environment where they feel like they can grow and learn. Um, and through those interactions, we we ensure that we are always bringing opportunities to them, um, including being mentors in our programs, um, however they wanna get involved, whether it be service learning projects, um, whether it be service learning trips, um, you know, it might be as staff, it might be as volunteers. Um, we offer internships within our organization as well that I directly oversee. Um, internships doesn't necessarily have to be at our UH location, at our Atherton location. Um, you know, we offer internships in our aquatics programs, our other youth programs, our, you know, substance abuse programs, um, fitness, um, really anything that there is a need for within our organization. Um, I think it's part of my responsibility to try to fit that puzzle piece when it comes to the, um, when it comes to the students needing an internship in that realm. Well, let me, you know, I'm, I'm vaguely uh, familiar or somewhat familiar um, with two of the programs that you mentioned. Um, and one is, you know, you take the, the why that is takes international trips. Could you tell us a little bit about your international trips? And as you mentioned, 
um, many of them include a service learning component. So we we took a lot more pre-pandemic, um, but since the pandemic, we currently operate two service trips during the spring break. Um, and the reason why we have it during the spring break is because we, we take the college students up. College students don't have uh, fall break. And so we take advantage of that spring intercession that they have. Um, and we've been taking them to Molokai for a um, conservation service learning trip. Um, that one is headed by our senior program director um, of teen programs, Kai. That's like his second home. Um, he's been going for years. And he actually started going because um, he was actually a participant in one of those projects at the Y. And now he's leading it. Um, and then I lead the Philippines service project. And so for that one, we partner with um, Non Inc., the, the construction company. Um, we also partner with the Rotary Club of Honolulu. Um, and then we also partner with Cebu YMCA um, up in the Philippines. And each year they will identify um, a community that our school, an elementary school in the community, doesn't necessarily have to be Cebu, but somewhere in the Philippines, that we will go and pretty much help um, help either renovate or construct new classrooms for the students. Um, a lot of the schools in the Philippines, they have way too many students for the classroom. Um, a lot of the times, or a lot of the schools, they because they don't have enough classrooms, the students will set up chairs outside and that's that's their classroom. Um, and so what we do is we we go and we mix cement by hand, we put in buckets, we pour it out, um, really lay the foundation. And we are no experts, but um, there, there's an awesome team up in the Philippines and awesome people from here that help go up and construct it. Um, and, you know, past that, one of the biggest amazing things is that our college students get to experience all that. But at the same time, um, they get to make and build relationships with the elementary students and the teachers there. Um, of course, you know, being in the rural Philippines, they very rarely get um, tourists in the communities that we that we try to um, tackle. And so to for them to be able to kind of experience people who they have only seen through their phone or TV that, you know, that might be the first and last time that they see anybody that that doesn't belong to their community per se. Um, so again, past just the construction, it's really that relationship building um, and experience that we get to bring to the college students and to the um, community members in the Philippines. And, you know, you have a way through the Atherton, but also through your programming to actually get um, public high school kids um, into the University of Hawaii and other universities. Um, and it's called College Camp, if I'm not mistaken. And you have to even find, uh, it's during the summer and um, I'm gonna stop there because I'll let you describe College Camp and its purposes because it's a, it's something you wouldn't necessarily associate with YMCA. Our College Camp program, man, that is one, one of, if not the most impactful program that I've been a part of, um, you know, it's, we um, recruit, I guess, high school students. Um, the program is completely free, but we bring high school students um, all together across the island, but furthermore across the state. So the past couple of years, we brought students from Big Island, from Maui, from Kauai, from Olkai, um, all over, you know, the state to, Ho to Oahu. And we present to them and give them opportunities to explore college and career opportunities that they might not have um, the resources to do so where, where they're at, whether it be at home, at school, um, for whatever reason. And so throughout the week, these students go on college campus tours. Um, they do you know, workshops, resume building workshops, uh, financial literacy, um, cover letters. They do interview workshops. Um, we sponsor a business ca casual outfit for them um, in partnership with Uniqlo Hawaii. Um, you know, we bring in a bunch of guest speakers and they just learn about the college process. Um, we're not here to push college onto them. We, we understand that, you know, these students want to explore college, right? That's what, that's what this program is about. 
they they want to explore college to see if it's for them, but they might not have the resources to do so. Um, their school might not have a college and career counselor. Um, you know, their their parents might not have gone to college or even looked into college before. Um, they might be first generation. They their community just might not have the capability to help these students explore past high school. Um, and that's kind of what we're there for. That's the bridge that we want to, um, or that's the gap that we want to fill for them. You know, at the end of the week, we, or throughout the week, we we work with them and make sure that they build confidence and making sure that they are able to make decisions um, based off of the week. And, you know, leading up to, we have this thing called career night where we bring in professionals from all different fields. Um, and these fields are determined by the students actually. So before they start, they fill out a, a pre-survey letting us know what field they might be interested in. Not, not necessarily what they want to go into, but just, I, I haven't pursued this field before. Um, it sounds interesting. I want to learn more about it. And based off of that pre-survey, we identify um, leaders in the community who are in that field and is willing to come down and, and talk with the students. Um, and we we treat it as a networking session um, where, you know, at the end of the week, we'll bring the students together with these uh, community leaders and we will set up kind of networking sessions for them to ask questions. Um, the, the professionals get to share lessons learned um, along their college or their career path um, or journey. You know, they get to answer any questions that the students might have for them. You know, in the past, we've we've had a lot of um students get offered internships or employment through these um through these career nights so very very impactful and life-changing and you know just hearing stories from past college camp participants um many of the pre previous participants say that they've built relationships and a support system through this program that they wouldn't have gotten anywhere else whether they have pursued college or not um, the support system that they've built from this program. And it's just a week, right? It's, it's not like they're here for a month, not like they're here with us for, for a full year. It's a week um, and they've built relationships that last a lifetime. So very, very impactful. Um, I, I wish that every high school student were to experience this program, um, but that's, that's what we're getting into. We wanna definitely make sure that our reach is out there um, and impacting as many students as we're able to. From what I understand also, that you have several sessions during the summer of college camp, uh, one week long, and it's very intense. And as I mentioned, uh, you house them. Do you, ha you house them always at UH dorms or other places? We have an uh, amazing partnership with UH Manoa. So the past couple of years, they've been staying um, in the dorms at UH. And so the first night we stay out at Camp Edmund, um, you know, like I mentioned, we bring students from all over the island, um, all over the state, and the goal is for them to not know each other pr uh, prior to this camp. And so we'll take them out to Camp Urban for the first night, really um, hone in on that team building and relationship development amongst them. Um, and then they'll, for the rest of the week, we'll go to UH Manoa, stay in, normally we stay in Freer, so we'll stay in the dorms at UH, and then they'll stay there for the rest of the week. Um, and then, you know, they're rarely in their dorms because we're doing college campus tours. Um, we're doing different workshops. I will I will say that one of the most successful components of the college camp program are the college students as well. So while this program is geared for high schoolers to be able to explore um, college and career opportunities, we have our college students also in the program acting as mentors. And so throughout the week, the college students will get with the high school students and have group sessions and say, hey, what are some lessons learned? Um, what do we wanna work on tomorrow? Or what do we wanna focus on tomorrow for the rest of the week? Um, you know, and even past the program, the, the college mentors are there to be that support for them, whether the students go into college next year, whether they go straight into the workforce and need a reference, or they need to do mock interviews with their mentor. Um, many of our many of our college mentors are still in touch with our participants, just helping them in life along the way, whether it be college, career. Um, there again, it's just a big support system that we build throughout this program. And this program has been going on for about two decades, hasn't it? Or um, 
cool. it's been going on for a really long time um really really long time for the longest time it was actually grant funded um and then for a while we were able to get uh the funding through donors and so while the because it was grant funded there were um not necessarily restrictions but there were requirements that the students needed to be you know um first generation college student from a title one school so on and so forth um however as we changed to a donor funded program we were able to loosen those restrictions um you know we we understand and re we realize that just because you don't go to a title one school doesn't mean that you have the resources to make the decisions to go or not to go to college um, or pursue you know a certain career path and so luckily um, we were able to kind of loosen those restrictions um, while we do make it a preference on their application process we don't want to restrict anybody just because they're not from a title one school or just because they don't make certain qualifications do your um students that are involved with the program later come back and become mentors for the for a new group of students it's funny you say that because just this past week we had two participants um reach out to me and say hey when's the application opening up for mentors because i want to apply um and these were students who were participants um last year and two years ago so they they want to come back and you know a lot of we had a mentor this past summer that was a participant back in 20 i believe 2014 or sorry 2017 um so definitely you know the participants want to come back and make the same impact for students that their mentor had on them um so full circle moment definitely that's really that's really you know i think you know as you're as you're talking about this you know the college camp not something you would associate again with the ymca um seems to be your one of your whatever great programs now i know and you'll have to explain this to um uh, all of us uh, with your audience um tell us about you know your work with stevenson and roosevelt and other public um schools because that's something that you wouldn't associate with the y i mean of course you'd expect kids from those schools to come to the y especially either atherton or nuwanu uh, perhaps do want to um, because there's a pool there and, and basketball courts, et cetera, et cetera. But um, uh, tell us about that work, you know? We have a lot of work when it comes to youth, um, youth programming. And for Stevenson and Roosevelt specifically, um, we are on campus and we serve those students thanks to our 21st century programs. Um, we here, when we, when we say youth programs, what I like to try and do is we like to try to identify what the need is in that specific community or that school and find the tools to bridge that gap. Um, through our 21st century program, we target um, academic learning loss. Uh, we, we also try to, our uh, one of our components is to minimize, um, minimize absentees decrease um, negative behavior within the students. So it really is a, a real strong partnership that we have to have with that school um, to ensure that progress is being made within our programs through our grant. Um, if you're familiar with our A-plus programs, um, our, our child care programs, 21st century is kind of kind of like a golden child of programs um, when it comes to after school programming. We have specific um, academic tutoring um, that's catered to each school. Uh, it's a little bit challenging now because we we realize that the way that the students are learning math or English is not the way that we learned it in school. And so definitely a shock there um, and a big learning curve. But we also tackle um, social emotional learning that the students feel feel safe in our program and making sure that they feel heard. Um, we try to incorporate youth youth voice into all of our programs so really having the students identify what they want to see from the program we help guide them in kind of constructing what that looks like and eventually you know we want them to be the ones to execute it um, amongst their peers as well and that's just with our guidance and so we really want to you know encourage youth leadership within our programs whether it be at the elementary middle or high school age um you know we we're not just child care we don't just you know have child watch uh for our fitness again we we try to identify the needs that are specific to the schools and the communities 
and we say, hey, are we able to tackle that and are we able to minimize um, the gap and what resources do we need to, to have that? Stevenson, the junior high school that's very close to Atherton and um, Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt High School, hmm. um, not Teddy, I'm not, not uh, Franklin, um, they're the Rough Riders. Um, they're pretty close to that to the Atherton. Are there other schools besides this junior high school and high school that you work with? We recently um, got a grant to have after school and summer programming at all of our YMCA locations um, for six or 12 graders. And so right now we are partnering with schools across the island to say, hey, we have um, programming at your nearby YMCA location. Um, Similar to our 21st century program, we we offer tutoring, we offer youth voice enrichment. Um, we offer all these things, including a free membership for the teens, um, for them to use at any wild location year round. We offer all these things completely free to your students. We just want to um, invite your students down, make sure that they understand that they have a safe place um, and an enriching, enriching place that they're able to come to um, and utilize. And, you know, through offering a safe space for them, um, you know, I think minimizes a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, dangerous opportunities that students would take advantage of um, had they, should they be just roaming around um, after school bored, right? Because especially at that age, when you're bored, that's when the most um, negative things happen. So, you know, just providing a space for the students to come to, I think is is a huge opportunity for um, the schools to take advantage of and to kind of filter their students into. Now, you um, you said come on down, but you meant that, I, mean, I assume, that you're setting up shop at each of these schools uh, and the why is, so that you're, you're, you're actually at the physical location of the school after school. Is, am I correct in saying that? For some schools, yes. And so um, we currently have programming at Stevenson Middle School. Um, and Dole Middle School. We have physical presence on many of our many uh, middle and high schools across the island through our um, through our substance abuse and treatment program, our mental health program as well. Um, that that's headed by our Kalihi YMCA. Um, so we do have presence on a lot of schools. Um, when it comes to the after school programming, we definitely want to get on campus um, for many for a lot more schools. However, right now, because we just got awarded this grant and it's a huge opportunity, um, we were focusing on opening up locations at our Ys um, across the island and then kind of spreading out to the schools um, once that's solidified and we have the resources available. So from what you just said, in addition to the tutoring, um, you have um, programs that deal with um, drug problems and also uh, programs that deal with social, emotional, um, psychiatric issues too. Our Kalihi location is the expert on this. They're the ones that head it. They're the ones that lead it. Um, but we we understand that some sense of substance abuse and mental health um, in youth is extremely important, and it is an issue that doesn't go addressed very um, at, as much as it should be. And so our Kalihi location really identified that, um, and they're they're going full force and making sure that that's minimized. Um, the students are getting the help that they need. Not only are, um, you know, are that program, not only are they being reactive, but they're also being proactive and making sure that students develop healthy habits to cope with whatever, you know, they might be going through for whatever, whatever reason. Um, so our Kali location is doing a fantastic job on that. Um, I know that not only on Wahoo, but they're starting to um, do the same programming in Maui as well. So program is definitely getting a lot of traction um, because I think a lot more people are seeing that it is a great need amongst um, youth that are in middle and high school. John, you just outlined a, a plethora of programs that the new Y, as opposed to the old Y, um, is doing both at Atherton and across the YMCA. One last question about the uh, going back for a moment to the college camp. It's my understanding also that you um, provide some funding for the kids. I mean, small funding, but still significant um, with the Takatani um, uh, scholarships. Is that true? You know, the Takatani Foundation, extremely generous enough to um, help provide scholarships to students who 
have attended and mentors who have attended college camp. Um, you know, like I said, our, our college camp program is to help break down as many barriers as we're able to for students who might not have the resources to go to college, um, whether that be financial or just lack of knowledge or lack of support. Um, our our Takatani scholarship really helps support those who are in a financial need to go to college. Um, you know, they they trust and partner with the Y to ensure that we are able to pro provide those scholarships and minimize that financial barrier for many of our participants and our mentors. Um, like I said, you know, a lot of our past participants come back as mentors and they pursue college while doing this mentorship. Um, and that's exactly what we want because we want the mentors to be able to tell them, I was in your shoes. I, I was a participant exactly X amount of years ago and this is where I am now. Um, this is, you know, what I'm pursuing. These are the struggles. These are the struggles that I've been through. Um, you know, I can help and refer you to take this path. Um, but, you know, the Takatani Scholarship or the Takatani Foundation is extremely generous in partnering with us um, to to provide those scholarships for the students. You don't operate alone. This is probably my last question for you today. Um, you don't operate alone in the sense that don't you have a board of managers, which is sort of like a normal board for a nonprofit. I mean, there's a there's a central um, why. Uh, I mean, it's not central, but there's a board that meets in New Wano that's really the the legal representative of the YMCA of Hawaii. But you do have um, a board of managers that advise you um, uh, and you know contribute to the well being of the Atherton Y. Describe that, that that a little bit. I mean, what are who are these people? You know, what do they do? Um, you know, you have a wonderful um, uh, uh, director or chair of that board by the name of Ben, who um, is, is just a wonderful man, but I'll, I'll let you do the talking. So describe that board of managers. Our board of directors are amazing. Um, they are our biggest support. So they are, you know, our biggest support, our biggest advocates. Um, they really help in not only the operations of our programming, um, they they connect us with a lot of different partners and organizations and just amazing people to really make sure that um, not only does our do our program succeed, but we're always looking to take that next step to to get to that next level. Um, but also they provide extremely insightful um, insightful knowledge in terms of vision of where our program should be heading. Um, and where our branch should be focusing on. Um, you know, they, many of our board uh, members, which you are one of our amazing board members, um, they help provide, they also help identify need, right? And that's what I was saying. We, we try to identify the need so that we can tackle it. And they help identify exactly that. Um, I have an amazing team of staff as well. They are really the, the backbone of our programs um, and you know, partnering with the board to help provide those partnerships, um, to also help bridge those gaps, to help us, to lead us really in the right direction um, has been extremely, extremely insightful and valuable towards the success of our, um, our mission. Last comments will be uh, for you. And um, uh, so if you can encapsulate or in a, in a paragraph or so, um, what motivates you every day when you wake up to go and work at the YMCA of Honolulu? That is a loaded question. <laughs> you know, I, it's really, it's really the, the people that we serve, the families that we serve. Um, I, I don't, I, I haven't, I wasn't really the type that said, oh, I need, you know, my, my bucket filled. Um, but this, this job or this opportunity, this organization has really helped me understand that there is a bucket that needs to be filled and this you know opportunity feels exactly that um you know personally my mission is to my per personal mission is to you know make sure that we are bringing enriching opportunities to the students and the families anywhere from kindergarten to college age um i started in the a plus program so i have a very um strong foot footing when it comes to the elementary age youth as well um, so yeah, anywhere from, you know, kindergarten to college age, I want to make sure that accessibility to our programs are very minimal. Um, 
you know, I'm extremely fortunate enough to be in a position where I am able to seek funding or financial resources that help us um, offer these life changing opportunities to the families and the students um, to li at little to no cost. And that's really all I want um, to, is for people to experience what we have to offer and not have financial barriers in the way. Um, I, you know, wish that I had something like this that I knew of when I was growing up. Um, it, I know financials were an extremely big barrier when it came to me attending programs that I really wanted to do as a child. Um, so I want to make sure that, you know, as much as I can, families don't have to worry about, oh, hey, we can't afford that. Um, that's why I'm grateful for the Y to be able to offer financial assistance for the programs that we we might have to charge up front. Um, but do these donor and grant funded opportunities as well um, that that minimizes so much um, barriers for the families, I think. In concluding, um, it's been a true pleasure uh, to talk to CEO of the Atherton, John Cho. He is also in charge of programs across the Y of Honolulu. Um, he also, in his own words, is a servant of the families of Oahu and the rest of our neighbor islands. So thank you, John. Aloha to you. Ahui ho. And this is Carl Ackerman, host of Journeys of the Mind. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Jake.